Okay, hello and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for connecting to this class where we will study more about uh, the prophetic. Let's pray and we'll get started. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, another opportunity to, Lord, uh, focus on your word. And Father, we thank you for the release of uh, the gifts, especially for the prophetic gift, Father God. And uh, Lord, uh, thank you that, Lord, we can see your power and glory, Lord, uh, through the words that you speak into our lives. So, Father, we ask that each one of us will be equipped and uh, that, Father, we will excel in in the uh, operating in the gifts of the spirit father lord today help us father god to uh, truly get a hold and a grip lord on on the things that you want to speak to our hearts we commit ourselves into your hands father uh, we speak blessings upon every single student their families uh, father we also commit the teachers into your hands in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. okay so uh, in the last class we touched on the prophetic in the New Testament. Uh, and we saw that it was nothing new. Already the prophetic anointing was operational under the Old Testament. Uh, it continued in the New Testament. The major difference is when Jesus died, he ascended up into heaven. The Holy Spirit was poured out on all the believers. And from that point onwards, we look at the empowering of the Holy Spirit, which all believers have. So once we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, all the believers who are baptized in the Holy Spirit can operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So that's the major difference. But in the Old uh, Testament, there were only select few people who could operate in the prophetic anointing. Okay, So that was uh, the main thing. Then we saw how uh, the Lord Jesus operated in the prophetic. He was a prophet. We see how John the Baptist had a prophetic anointing. We also see in the early church how different people were moving in the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, and it was not just the leaders, but also the believers were able to operate. Then we talked about the gift of prophecy, which uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church about and we see that there were nine gifts that he mentioned in first Corinthians chapter 12 one of which is the gift of prophecy uh, and we saw that the basic gift of prophecy the the work of that gift is to exhort edify exhort and comfort which uh, scripture is that Yeah. Okay, first Corinthians 49 was three. Okay, remember that because that is the one of the key verses we have to remember in the prophetic. So first Corinthians chapter 49, verse 3, which talks about the expression of the basic gift of prophecy and what it is supposed to do. And how does it help? Verse 4 clarifies that. When somebody prophesies, they edify the church. So that is what it does. It builds up the believers. It builds up the church. And that's why this gift is so important. We also saw that there is a progression of the gifts, isn't it? The simple gift of prophecy, then the grace gift of prophecy, uh, or the ministry gift of prophecy. And then you have finally the office of a prophet. So grace gift of prophecy is uh, when excuse me, we see that God uh, calls different people to have a, a ministry, okay, or they are also known as membership gifts, membership gifts. So such gifts um, are given to people, things like prophecy, uh, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, having a uh, uh, ministry of mercy. So all these are certain graces that God gives people in the body of Christ. And we see that their ministry is marked quite powerfully by these gifts. So can all believers function in the gifts? Yes, they can. Everyone to some extent can prophesy, can teach, can lead, can give. 
but we, there are people who have the grace gift meaning uh, there is a greater ability that god gives them to serve with these particular gifts so there can be people who operate in the grace gift of prophecy okay so then what will happen we'll notice that their ministry has so much of the prophetic and when we say grace gift of prophecy it could also be that not only is their uh, ministry prophetic like you know in terms of uh, serving within the church but they can be extremely prophetic even if they have some other uh, role like let's say they are a business person or they are a musician or they are a teacher but it will be marked by the prophetic because you'll have they'll be hearing from god and serving in that area and making a tremendous impact okay so their ministries have a greater impartation of the prophetic okay more grace uh, and greater faith and they operate in that level so that is the grace gift of prophecy now coming to the ministry uh, of the office of a prophet we've already seen five uh, offices that the chapter ephesians chapter 4 talks about and there one of the offices is that of a prophet okay similarly another passage to remember is first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28 can somebody please read that passage yeah and verse 28 please chapter 12 and verse 28. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. So we have at least two clear passages that talk about prophets when we say prophets it automatically means that they are operating in the office that they're not operating at a lower level and uh, we've we've seen that when we say somebody is a prophet it has to do with uh, governmental authority and governmental responsibility and their prophetic words uh, go beyond what a basic gift can accomplish. So they may call out moves of God for the body of Christ. They may speak to regions and nations. Um, they may bring about uh, very strong instructions. They may um, you know, speak of uh, um, a correction, some major corrections, right? So, but it carries an authorization from God when they move in, in that realm. So there are prophets. God has given prophets in the church. We must not dismiss that. Uh, as you look at 1 Corinthians 12, 28, it also states that God has appointed, it says, first prophets, second, uh, sorry, first apostles, second prophets. Okay, and then the entire list or some of the ministries, okay, that has been mentioned. But the point I want to make is we'll we'll study this later first apostles, second prophets, it does not mean that there is a ranking in the fivefold ministry gifts. There's no ranking. But it's more like uh, who goes out to do the work of the ministry first. So generally, we see that apostles are the ones who may initiate the work. And then the others come in their work and you know they have to function in their role so it's more like that it does not mean that apostle is greater than prophet that's not the understanding we'll come to it okay but i just want to clarify that right now but notice the main point that we wanted to make is in two passages very clearly there is a mention that god has given prophets to the church so it is something that we must accept. Are there um, any scriptures that say that right now, in the current scenario where we live, God has uh, taken away the offices of apostles, prophets, teachers, 
you know evangelist pastors no there is no such scripture so we can expect more and more to see people function in these roles we will see apostles we will see prophets you know we will see teachers evangelists and pastors okay so um, god continues to work through all of these offices now how do we distinguish between the three uh, we've given quite a bit of explanation over here we've said that people can be prophesying believers um, then there can be people who have a like a very clear ministry prophetic ministry that's the grace gift or the membership gift of prophecy then office of a prophet okay now when it comes to believers if at all believers are uh, trained very well they can become prophesying believers wherever they go okay so that's that's what we want to learn all of us can move in the gift of prophecy and when we can be equipped about how to hear from god uh, how to as some of the questions we have been asking how to know whether it is god who is speaking uh, is it aligned to the word so when believers are equipped and they understand these things they can flow in the prophetic wherever they are okay so that can happen so god can enable all of us to be prophesying believers who are operating greatly in the prophetic wherever god has called us to be but that will need uh, some equipping that will need some guidance that will need some training for the believers okay now when we talk about the prophetic in the new testament one more aspect which i think i kind of uh, missed i'm on page 72 in the pdf version uh, is that the prophetic is usually a larger term when we say prophecy that is referring to one of the gifts one of the nine gifts but the prophetic can have a bunch of gifts you know um uh, like sort of operational now what are some of these gifts when we take the nine gifts from first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 11 there are some other gifts known as word of wisdom word of knowledge discerning of spirits and prophecy so these four gifts together are what we term as the prophetic so we are operating in the prophetic does not mean that one is only giving prophetic word prophetic word prophetic word may not be they may be giving a word of knowledge a word of wisdom or discerning of spirits but they all this comes under the umbrella of the prophetic now what what do these gifts stand for just some simple explanation word of knowledge just the way we see the name word of knowledge okay so it's not a sentence it's a word meaning it's a small piece of information that is what word of knowledge stands for so when someone is releasing a word of knowledge it could be like uh, some information about the person uh, god says uh, okay or i i sense that uh, you have studied uh, in uh, you have studied uh, some form of arts what is this a small piece of information that is word of knowledge got it word of wisdom what is word of wisdom same thing it says word right so a small solution or a, a small word that brings a solution for example somebody may come to us and they may look so stressed tense we are praying for them and suddenly god reveals that they are worried about their job and they don't know which job to pick and god gives them a solution and says that uh, you know um, wherever wherever you find uh, uh, this uh, this policy take that job right so that person suddenly they get a solution till now they were stressed out about what should i do so the solution is word of wisdom as it says wisdom right so word of knowledge is just information word of wisdom is solution then discerning of spirits gift of discerning of spirits as it states we can understand 
what spirits are operational we can easily tell oh god's presence is here or we can sense some other presence ungodly presence or maybe while casting out demons we can tell there is this demon which is oppressing this individual that is discerning of spirits okay so these are the the um, set of gifts that can operate together which come under the umbrella of the prophetic now when we are operating in the prophetic uh, we cannot separate so the the way god works is uh, let's say we start praying okay there'll be a little bit of uh, word of knowledge little bit of word of wisdom little bit of discerning of spirits it'll all happen sort of organically on its own now we should not get very technical about i prayed and i am expecting god only for word of knowledge god limited to word of knowledge god will be like hey no i want to say more so we have to be open when it flows you just let it flow don't get stuck on what did i just say was that word of knowledge was that word of wisdom it's just technical information for us that's all uh, but in reality there is a whole bunch of gifts that flow together let it flow if it's flowing so then now we've understood right word of knowledge word of wisdom discerning of spirits what about prophecy the gift of prophecy how does that um, operate gift of prophecy is when we are able to speak to that person the now notice word of knowledge um, is usually something that they've done like in the past but prophecy can be foretelling it can be future so that is prophecy you're speaking into their future so when we are ministering to someone everything might get covered or some of them might get covered allow it whatever the spirit of god is releasing we just let it flow okay so any questions anything yeah we can just take it up yeah tell me so ma'am like uh, so this question i i heard before so now this student asked to me like same thing what you explained so i i want to clarify like any particular definition for what is prophetic and prophecy we can say any particular definition like this is what prophetic and this is what uh, prophecy instead of explaining this much because they don't like what is word of knowledge and all that time he asked so we are explaining what is prophetic any particular sentence we can make like that yeah. so see the prophetic is to to hear from god that's what it is now we hear so many things from god we discern so many things from god right that's where all these gifts come in now prophecy if you want just you know that word prophecy um prophecy is one of the prophetic gifts and it can um it can speak of what is to come okay so you can put it that way you can put it that way yeah is that okay okay fine all right now moving on to the next section here in the uh, chapter on the prophetic in the new testament prophetic presbytery what is that we see that there seems to be a practice of the elders of the church praying for the people whom they are commissioning what is commissioning to send them out right to release them into their call and say okay now you go you be a blessing in the kingdom of god so when that happens when the leaders finally are ready to release they commission okay they they uh, authorize them now you can go okay serve the lord as whoever he has called you to be at that time there can also be prophetic words that are released over the people whom we are praying for there is a practice which we notice Uh, in the in the new testament which is called the laying on of hands laying on of hands where the leaders will bless um 
impart spiritually and commission the mentees to now go step out okay so the leadership that is doing or the eldership a presbyter is elder so the leaders or the elders who are doing this are what are known as prophetic presbytery okay prophetic presbytery so for uh, timothy it would have been paul who prayed over him and he laid hands on him and there are some scriptures also uh, 1 Timothy 4:14 where it says do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership meaning at the at that time when you were being commissioned right uh, something has been imparted to you a spiritual gift so see this is also something we must understand we've learned about impartation Okay, so is it possible to impart gifts? Yes, it's possible. It can happen. Paul is talking about it. There is some gift that has been imparted to you through prophecy, the laying on of hands. And he says, don't neglect that gift. So it's all, it, it's about faith. When we are talking about operating in the gifts of the spirit, it's a matter of faith. So by faith, those who are praying, they release uh, by faith, those who are being prayed for receive and the gift needs to be um, developed and the person needs to start operating in it. So these things happen. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is a process, laying on of hands. Is it biblical to lay, lay hands on uh, people, commission them, confirm their calling, ordain them, release them uh, or activate some gift which is in them? Yes, it's in the Bible. It, it's the way the early church, you know, went about uh, sending out their ministers. So in Acts 13 also we see, before Paul and Barnabas went, the elders joined together, they prayed, and then they said, okay, as the Holy Spirit is leading, you go. You do the work of the ministry. Okay, so uh, any, any questions on this? Prophetic Presbytery? Graduation ceremony. Yeah. So we have it here at APC also. When the students finally graduate, like whichever they have chosen to do two years, they say, okay, fine, we have done. I want to go now start the ministry. Then all of us family we pray on pray, we lay hands so that we can release spiritual gifts and impart spiritual gifts. Yeah, so we do that for uh, Every batch. I think COVID batch we missed because you couldn't, they couldn't come, right? We just had a session on the online, but of course we prayed for them. So that's how it is. Uh, yeah. Ma'am, we are looking about this one, laying of hands and the practice of it. Yes. And like uh, there is also some people practice of soaking up, like they goes to some dead persons grieve and they be with them and uh, like uh, the practice that they think like soaking near the person's tomb or with some person's cloth uh, things that they will receive their anointing or they will receive the gifts of them in, like the impartation will happen by soaking so is this that practice also is that true and is it biblical and it's a prophetic word. See, all this is coming from, um, I think, two things. When you say soaking or seeking God or waiting in the presence of God, that is biblical. We see uh, the psalmist writes so much about, you know, I wait upon the Lord. Uh, and you see other passages like, they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings. So being in the presence of God to receive from God, it's a biblical thing. Many people call that as soaking, just being in the presence, worshipping, hearing from God. So that we understand. Now, when concepts like this come up, like you go somewhere to soak up, you know, the anointing and all, I wouldn't say it's biblical. We don't see such things happening in the Bible. Okay. Now, why have people come up with these concepts? Because they have um, learned about the anointing and impartation. And they desire it. Is it a good thing to desire impartation? Yes. That is very good. When we see something good and we say, Lord, I want it. You know, I want that kind of an anointing. What is 
the desire hopefully our desire is very sincere what we are saying is lord mm, i want to serve you well uh, i want to be empowered by the spirit i want to be a blessing to the people so then when we desire impartation that's a good thing now the problem is that what people do to receive that impartation is questionable see if i am learning i'm reading some books i'm listening to some sermons i'm evaluating it with the word and then i want to receive an impartation or you know i'm i'm attending some worship i'm being a part of some conference workshop seminar makes sense or being a part of a ministry serving faithfully over there how impartation happens through all these means all that's fair now some really exceptional ways like you said grave and all it's really questionable okay because uh, i'll tell you where that comes from it comes from one incident you read it in um, the case of elisha yeah. yeah where there is a yeah there's a there's a dead person and i think elisha is there or something he's hiding oh, oh no sorry sorry um, i'll tell you uh, no no what happens is there's the tomb of elisha and there is a dead person who comes in contact with that thing and he comes alive and the what we understand is that even though elisha was dead okay uh, his his body like his his remains carried the anointing so with that concept in mind now what people are doing is okay if there was an anointed person but they are now in the lord they've gone to be with the lord they think let's go get some anointing from their remains i don't think we need to do that you know just based on one incident in the case of elisha it's very weird <laughs> you can get it in so many other ways so yeah it's not biblical okay great so we'll move on then let's come to chapter 4 which is about the prophetic word the prophetic word is god speaking to us he speaks and that can be released in different ways it can be said that this is what i think god wants to tell you um you know god has this plan for you god wants to bless you like this god wants to lead you like this so it can be spoken what we call as prophetic word okay that's quite easy to understand or uh, when god speaks we may release it in the form of an intercession so we've learned this in the prayer uh, course where there are many things god speaks not for us to go and tell but for us to pray through so the other expression can be prophetic intercession i go into intercession based on what god is revealing to my heart or the third one is where that prophet prophetic word that god gives us it may say it might tell us uh, go do this you know go do that like when we look at the lives of uh, prophets like elijah elisha they went and they told the um widow okay, whatever you have make bread bring it to me so there is an instruction that's coming but what is happening through that the power of god is released miracles are released then suddenly you know the food doesn't run out they have sufficient they continue to live for uh, some more days or uh, go to elisha's story where the widow he goes and says okay that uh, widow is ready to die with her sons because of the debt but he instructs power of god is released so there are times when the prophetic we hear from god the instructions but it it's meant to release the power of god okay so uh, it can be expressed as the power of god or demonstrated as the power of god sometimes the prophetic can come forth as song god is speaking but it's being released in music song or um, uh maybe some instrumental music but it's prophetic it's literally from the heart of god and it's bringing healing it's bringing restoration so it can be released in music it can be released through art it can be released through action action is um uh, we mentioned earlier 
we said um, see when when in the book of isaiah you see isaiah is prophesying a potter is on the wheel there's some action going on there right uh, or when we said agabus he takes the belt and he expresses like a drama right he he, uh, he doesn't say it he does an action so it can also come forth in the form of an action somebody doing something okay so these are all the expressions of the prophetic it can be a simple word or it can be in all the other ways that we have listed out now why is it being released there are many things that the prophet can do the prophetic word can do the prophetic song can do right uh, uh, or prophetic intercession can can result in these things ultimately so we list down all of those first is it brings edification exhortation comfort that we've already understood that is the basic thing what a prophetic word can do we've seen that in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 3 uh, edify means build up so here we are uh, at this time when god is pouring out his spirit and he is strengthening the church so that we can be a glorious church, we can be a radiant church, we can be a powerful church. How is all this going to happen? In many different ways. God will build us up in many different ways. The preaching of the word, the, you know, the, the pouring out of his spirit, the release of the gifts. One of the gifts is prophecy. So when we as believers start operating in the gift of prophecy, the church will be built up. It's getting stronger and stronger. Okay, so it's a good thing to be prophetic is a good thing. Uh, now, I know we've also discussed because of the way it has been done in the past, some of the abuses of the prophetic, it, it makes it harder for us to agree or accept. But what does the Bible say? It's a beautiful thing. The genuine gift, when it is operational, it is going to build up the body of Christ we need people to be built up and so we need a lot of the prophetic uh, in our midst so it will edify it will exhort exhort simply means to um, encourage it comes from the greek word paraklesis and it means to you know um, sort of uh, uplift someone in the lord so prophecy can do that uh, then comfort, what is comfort? Comfort is from the Greek word paramutia, which means speaking closely to someone. So we know when, let's say, uh, someone has uh, had a loss or they are going through great discouragement, how do we speak to them? Very gently, we speak, you know, close to them. Our language, we change it like, okay, I understand. Um, uh, I am praying for you. It brings so much of peace, assurance and comfort speaking closely to someone or speaking tenderly to someone so the prophetic can do that like god has seen your tears you know god has seen your labor it brings comfort when someone feels oh i'm so far away from god i don't even know whether god sees my faithfulness so it, it really uh, it's like a balm soothing balm that you put on a hurt so that is comfort this is the basic thing that the prophetic word does it brings edification exhortation comfort prophetic word can also reveal one's character uh, i think i gave these examples earlier but i'll just repeat it see by looking at a person we can't predict like what they uh, the, the kind of heart that they carry okay we just cannot but spiritually, sometimes God can impart that knowledge to us. Now, we are not judging them. Okay, It's not uh, uh, judging in the logical sense. That's not what we are talking about. But discerning spiritually. By looking at a person, maybe only once we met them, but we have the sense in our spirit. Oh, you know, such a, such a, um, a dedicated person to God or such a faithful person, such an honest person. How can we even know in the spirit it's possible sometimes to discern? And God may want to do that for many reasons. So uh, we had the example of uh, Nathaniel. Jesus looked at Nathaniel and said, very honest man. 
you know great character uh, this man has so this is a man without any guile without knowing nathaniel jesus discerned in the spirit about his character so the prophetic can do that it can dis help discern what people are made up of how does it help it helps us to guide them it helps us to lead them into god's destiny for their lives or think about this you know peter peter came and he was so raw but jesus when he met peter in the initial time itself he said you are the rock okay something about you that brings firmness to the kingdom stability to the kingdom whereas if we look at his personality we can never say that but through spiritual understanding the prophetic jesus says no this man will be the rock and we know what happened later on after jesus ascended up he was the rock for the church in so many different ways okay so uh, we are able to discern people's character and their destiny so when we we are able to understand this what happens as leaders as mentors working with others we can pray for them and say holy spirit reveal which is the direction you want this person to go then maybe we are not even telling them but we can start guiding them in that direction you know one day god is going to uh, release an amazing prophetic ministry through this brother or uh, i can see this worship leader is so prophetic or um, god is calling so and so to be a leader in the workplace so we we pick it up and then we can start to guide them lead them pray for them so that these gifts and graces which are in their lives get activated now what if we don't discern these things it's really sad because people will come to church their whole life and as pastors leaders we are not discerning we are not guiding them in line with what god has for them right so that way uh, the prophetic word can help us or the prophetic can help us understand people's character people's destiny then we can guide them and we can uh, ensure that they are journeying well to do what god wants them to do so that is another um, impact of the prophetic uh, are you all with me or is it too fast uh, i'll go on is good okay okay fine let's move on then fine so what else does the prophetic um, do the prophetic word can give us an idea about god's plans and purposes god's plans and purposes okay uh, we know that those who are the sons of god you know we, they are led by god romans 8:14 says the sons of god they are led by god so god leads god guides he has a purpose for his people through the prophetic we can understand what exactly god wants to do in someone's life now when we look at the life of paul remember he was moving towards uh, jerusalem okay and there was a purpose he knew that he has to go to jerusalem now through the holy spirit god gave him a confirmation not once not twice many times there were you know some brothers from tyre who said uh, you're going to jerusalem you're going to be bound paul um, similarly you find agabus he comes he says you're going to be bound paul so like that there were many instances where there was a confirmation holy spirit was telling what is going to happen so in this way we know that god is able to reveal through so many different people god was revealing to paul this is what is coming ahead of you okay uh, or think about john the baptist john the baptist when he was born his father couldn't speak at that time but finally when he saw the baby he begins to prophesy he's he sta states many things you child you will do this you will do that so the baby is in the hand but what is happening god is revealing the purpose god is revealing the plan before the child even has an opportunity to uh, grow and the father can understand what the behavior of the child is like without any of that zacharias he starts to tell this is what you're going to do this is who you're going to be okay so god's spirit can reveal plans and purposes 
for our lives. Uh, so that is also something the prophetic can do. We can trust God for that. God reveal where you want to lead us, what you want to do through our lives. Okay. So uh, I mean, in my own life, there are all some of these uh, stories. If we start stories, <laughs> we won't finish it. So maybe some other time. But there were words that were spoken over my life way before, way before I could um, even imagine you know, that God is going to lead me in ministry and all. But those years, you would wonder, how can it happen? But now you're like, God actually did it, right? So there are these prophetic words that are spoken, which are revealing the plans, the purposes of God for us. So we can trust God for that. Now, one more quick thing I want to tell in this context. We don't have to depend on prophetic word for everything. Okay, because how God works is um, he will lead us by the spirit. Romans 8, 14, the sons of God, they are led by the spirit of God. So he lead us by the spirit. Only sometimes for a confirmation, there may be a prophecy or a prophetic word, which is helpful because uh, we are very sure then, ah, correct. You know, God is speaking through all his people. So this is what God is saying. Or maybe through the word he confirms. Right? But we should not run after it. Sometimes what we tend to do as believers, we don't take action till we get a prophetic word. Okay? Uh, now that is not good. For everything we won't receive a prophetic confirmation. So don't... Uh, depend on it so much. If we get a prophetic word, great, well and good. But if not, we need to be so strong in God that we are okay to be led by the word. We are okay to be led by, uh, you know, the confirmation of his spirit directly speaking to us. Okay, you're getting what I'm saying, right? Okay, so don't depend so much prophecy, prophecy. If it comes, well and good. All right, so let's move on. So prophetic word can reveal plans, purposes. A prophetic word can stir up, it can cause faith to arise. Um, so if you go back to those same examples, Elijah and uh, the widow, Elisha and the widow, when they gave them the instruction, obviously faith would have risen in their lives, saying, okay, there is some hope, let's do this. Because they did not have any hope. They did not have any faith. But the instruction would have stirred up hope in their hearts. And then they did it. And they saw how miracles started happening. So sometimes people may be so discouraged. But when the prophetic word comes and says, come on, you know, God is telling you, do this, take this step, go, there will be an open door. Suddenly from hopelessness, we arise in faith. And we can, question is there? Okay, okay, I'll just go to our chat section here. Yes, Nina. Yes, please. Uh, I see. It's, uh, can, can you hear me? Uh, Nina, please give us a moment. We'll just have the sound. Yeah, she's speaking. Uh, can, I, can you hear me now? No? Okay, I'll just put it on the chat then. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, Nina, please go ahead. Thanks, Prince. You can hear me now? Not yet? Um, yeah, I think now we can hear you. Okay. Um, I think it is not so much about uh, the prophetic like that, but what you had mentioned that uh, about Peter, that P, uh, Jesus had prophesied, that he is the rock. So, I mean, I, my understanding was, so I just wanted to clarify, uh, that uh, the a few verses prior to that, when Jesus asked, uh, who do you say I am? And when uh, Peter says, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus, of course, says that flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, and but my father. So when he comes down, and uh, when I think that those verses that follow say that, uh, when he, but what I'm saying is, when he said that Peter, when he said you are Peter, 
uh, Cephas. I thought that meant really stone. Um, so because uh, and uh, that the rock or the foundation on which the church was built was really Jesus. I mean, that was what I thought. So I just wanted to clarify that because you mentioned that it is uh, that he also, I mean, he also is a rock on which the church was built. So I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, sure, um, Nina. Thank you for that uh, question. Um, so what you're saying is, uh, yes, the name of Peter is Cephas, but um, mm -hmm. You're saying it's a stone, and uh, yeah. if we if we call that a rock, then you know it's it's like saying um, we we yeah. are giving credit to Peter more than Jesus yeah. because ultimately Jesus yeah. is the firm foundation That's on it. which yeah. the church is built. Yeah, I I uh, I take your point. Uh -huh. The Cephas also means rock or stone, whichever uh -huh. uh, you know. English term you want to use for it. So I was okay. making that limited point that Cephas uh -huh, means okay. rock. Yeah. I didn't mean uh -huh. that, uh, you know, he is the basis for the church because later on, uh, uh -huh. I think it's Matthew 16, right? Where uh, it says, On this on this rock, I will build my I'll church. Build my church and the gates yeah. of hell. Yeah. And the gates of hell will not prevail That's against it. Matthew 16. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the context of that, Nina is uh -huh. uh, the revelation you know what peter says you are the christ mm -hmm. yes so the when we read matthew 16 our understanding is um uh -huh. that when jesus says you are peter and on mm -hmm. this rock this rock is not peter this yeah that's what i thought yeah. yeah he's talking about the foundation that he that that, that he is the christ yeah he is on the christ that revelation that he is the christ yeah. Right. He is the foundation. On this uh -huh. rock, I will build my church. Yes. Okay. I think the confusion okay. arises because uh, what Jesus was revealing prophetically about the destiny of Peter, that's, the yes. context is yes. completely different. He was just yes. saying that, Peter, you're going to be a very stable um, personality mm -hmm. for the church. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I knew that you was talking about uh, that, you know, Jesus was prophesying over him. And that was what happened, that he was a, an important person in the, as far as the building of the church was concerned. But I just wanted to clarify that. I yeah. mean, like what really we meant when, when we said that Peter, are we really saying that he's, of course, there is the, uh, uh, if you, in Ephesians, that these prophets are the foundation, that, but there's only one verse which refers to Peter in that way, or even the prophets. Uh, mm. Generally, we say it's the rock only. I mean, Jesus alone is the rock, no? So yeah, I just wanted yeah. to clarify that. I knew what you were saying that Jesus was prophesying over Peter, but I just mm. wanted to clarify. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, thanks, uh, Nina. Good question, actually. And uh, the context is different when we say rock uh, with regard to Peter or stone with regard to Peter. And then, you know, we're talking about Jesus building his church on the rock. The context is totally different. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thanks uh, for that. Um, we've reached the end of our time here. So we were saying um, the prophetic causes faith to arise. It stirs up faith in our hearts. And uh, then we are able to release it. We are able to see the power of God. Uh, so maybe we'll just stop here for today. And then we can pick up uh, from this. So even as we... Um, go let's desire for more of the prophetic because it will truly build up the body of christ stronger preparing us to be the kind of church that uh, jesus is coming back for um, so would uh, any of us like to pray please feel free to unmute and pray okay Can anyone from the online batch, please? Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have taught us from your word, Lord God, especially regarding the gift of prophecy that you have for us, Lord God, where we get to hear from you, Lord God. 
thank you lord we pray lord god that we will receive this gift and grow in the grace of this gift father god bless each of us lord god give us the desire lord god to thirst for this gift lord god and operate in that love that you've given us lord god for the benefit of others father whatever is the calling that you have for us help each of us to fulfill lord god and even as we hear your words lord god may it strengthen each of us lord god so that each of us have this calling lord god and you bless each of us lord god because you have called us father father we come at this time into your hands help each of us lord god in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you uh, jackin and thank you everyone uh, god bless you let's uh, connect on monday uh, have a blessed weekend bye for now